California Youth Authority is youth jail, and so it's beyond juvenile halls, beyond juvenile camps. It's the prison system for juveniles in California. It has young people um, as young as, I believe, 12 or 13 years old and up to age 25. It's every kind of young person you can imagine. The vast majority of them are from very disadvantaged backgrounds, poor families. They're close to 84% youth of color in the Youth Authority. An ugly incident caught on tape. A vicious beating caught on tape. The California Youth Authority is on the hot seat again. This time following the release of a videotape which shows counselors punching and kicking two wards of a Stockton youth facility. To me, the overriding issue that drives so many of the problems that I observed was the issue of violence. Uh, the amount of violence in the California Youth Authority has been allowed to deteriorate to unprecedented levels. I still, to this day, I sleep with my hand over my face because you have to worry about if somebody's going to walk past and hit you in the face with a lock and a sock. You have the bloods in the crypt. The bloods wear red and the crypts wear blue. And so he had took on the crypt thing. And, and so he, had, uh, he said, Dad, I'm not a gangbanger, but he said if I don't put this on my eye, tattoo over my eye, then things can happen to me in here. Then I will lose my life in here. And so that's why he did it. Right now my son is a 23 hour a day lockup with an hour um, outside activity in the cage. No reading material, a little window maybe to look outside, a toilet, a sink, in a bed, that's 23 hours a day lockup. They come in in the morning, they take all your blankets at 6 o'clock in the morning. After that, you in, a, in that room all day is cold and just your boxes and your socks. All day until 10 o'clock at night. Since he's been in protective custody, he's gotten jumped four times. And it's a lockup unit. And everybody's in their own room. The only way he can possibly get injured is because of staff neglect. They weren't getting education, so we complained about that because we were entitled to that under our lawsuit. And they started this process of giving education through the food slot in the door. They didn't even open the door to give kids these pathetic little lessons. So we complained about that, and as a result of that, their wonderful solution was to create metal cages in which the young people go to school in those units. Two hundred and seventy wards were maced by CYA staff in the course of just one month in 2003. That's two hundred and seventy masings at one facility in one month. In CYA, the sexual harassment is like a really, it's like an everyday thing. I remember guards hitting on me or when we do room checks in the nighttime. You know, can you show this to me? And um, it happened a lot. We fired any number of bad staff. The state personnel board hired the vast majority of these people back. People who had used excess force on wards, people who had sexually abused wards, and I can go on and on and on. On January 19th, Two cellmates, who were considered high risk for suicide, were found dead in their cells in a lockdown unit at Preston. I had a phone call from my ex-wife, and she says, Darrell is dead. And I had just spoke to him two days prior. I just, not, I, I just could not believe that. And so I, I went into a shock. I cried, I screamed. And, I think I think because she kept saying he's really dead, and um, I think that's when it really hit me. 
I think that it is time to admit it, that the California Youth Authority has been a failure. The question now is what to do. And that really is the question before us, what to do. It's much more cost effective to have reentry programs, to have rehabilitation, uh, to have aftercare, to make sure that nine out of 10 people don't go back to YA so that they continue to be a drain on the state's budget. Being in CYA, entering as like a juvenile and then coming out as an adult was like completely scary for me. I didn't know whether I was gonna come out and just mess up again and end up going to jail for life, you know? In the states that are doing the good job, like Missouri and in Georgia and in Texas and New York, the size of living units is about one half of what it is in California. I recently went to the state of Missouri. What they have is about three dozen 35-bed facilities around the state. They have real furniture, they have sofas, and the kids have music, and they wear their own clothes, and they have bunk beds. It's really, really different. And it's amazing how different the atmosphere is. It's been exactly 100 days since two young men were found hanged to death in a California youth facility in Northern California. We will not stand for another beating, another death, no more destruction of our youth anywhere in this country, in this nation, and in this state. Despite all of the recent public attention, the problems in the California Youth Authority are not going away anytime soon. This is time for everybody out there who's concerned about what the CYA is doing to call on the legislature, call on the governor, call on local policymakers. They need to hear from you that these prison facilities need to be closed and replaced with regional rehabilitation centers and community-based alternatives at the local level. It's time to stop allowing young people's lives to be thrown away.